everyone. So I did some Lord of the Rings inspired crafts a while back and I realized I never got around to posting the clips of my successes and my failures. This is definitely going to be a part one. I don't know when the part two will be, but one of the things that I'm not sure about is that I wanted to do a gallery wall in our bedroom and I didn't really know what kind of frames I wanted to go with as far as should they be more like wood or should it be more like gold filigree antique looking. So basically over time I kind of added a lot of images and graphics to my favorites on Etsy and slowly kind of collected them. They were either things that were shipped to me or that I could print out. And then I went to Michael's and I ended up getting some of these craft paper backgrounds that I figured I would use in the backgrounds of the frames that I did have on hand. Um, I went on to InDesign. It's a program that I use often. And before I actually purchased them, I made sure that everything kind of laid out the way I wanted. And then once everything came physically, I laid it on my bed, kind of played around with the layout and, you know, before <laughs> pinning everything to the wall. And here is the final result. I definitely want to like add some more fantasy elements, maybe not specifically Lord of the Rings, but just a little bit more fantasy elements to our bedroom. First thing I'll go ahead and show you because it's not actually hung up anywhere yet is my spray painting that I did. It was supposed to be like Smaug's eye. Like remember the scene where he's in the gold and he opens his eye up. That was kind of what this was supposed to be inspired by. So basically I sketched out the stencil that I wanted to create and I flipped the image over to the back and I ended up taking a pencil and running it along the image that I drew so that it would transfer to the poster board. Then I took an X-Acto blade or an X-Acto knife and cut out all the teeny tiny scales, um, which was very uh, painstaking, but it's okay. So that's how I ended up with the poster board stencil. And if you can see to the side, I just kind of lay it out. Okay, this is where I wanted the layer for the eye, then the layer for the scales. So the first thing I did is go in with some yellow and reds for the eye. And that's the color that I wanted the, the eye to be. And then I went all around it with some more brown shades. So then typical with a lot of this space spray paintings that um, I post either on YouTube or on my Instagram, I just went in with some magazine paper or newspaper to get the different colors layered. Then I laid my stencil down uh, and used the black to get the scale effects. Here's some spray painting ASMR for you. So I really wanted to capture that feeling and color and imagery of the gold that he was surrounded by. So I just kept alternating between this gold glitter glue that I found at the craft store and then going back in with the gold spray paint. And then here I am going in with a paint pen to do some more minor details that I don't think I captured with the stencil. I tried to add in some white highlights uh, to help with the shading. And I do like how it turned out, but I really would like to attempt this again and maybe do it a little bit differently. I wasn't sure if I wanted to put this in our office where the rest of my spray paintings are or with the other Hobbit Lord of the Rings artwork in our bedroom. So I really do want to add to the gallery wall and have like smaller knickknacks and stuff hanging from the wall in between that kind of fits with the theme. I thought that it would be cool to have Thorin's key. I ended up tossing these things that I made because they were so bad. I was following this tutorial and I didn't have all of the materials so I don't know if I'm going to attempt it again. I think the reason why I gravitate towards spray painting is because it's really quick. This is just, I don't even know what to say. I attempted this twice. This was the second key that I attempted. I mean, yeah, like, look at it. Look at it. It is just so, that's the first one. Look at it. Horrible, awful. I first started out with the X-Acto knife 
and I did a little stencil and I tried to cut out cardboard. So the first key that I made was really flimsy, but the idea was to make it a little bit more three-dimensional. So I went in with hot glue to try to do the raised bits in the middle. I had to pull up some inspiration there. And so I did not have aluminum duct tape like the instructions I was following suggested. So I was using aluminum foil and it just kept looking really crinkly. So then I thought maybe I could go in with some black paint or spray paint and try to make it look a little bit better but it just ended up looking like horrible. Which leads me to my next failure. Underneath the Hobbit door wreaths, I really wanted to have a sign that said like, no admittance except on party business or some of those classic Lord of the Rings signs. I don't know what a cricket is, but a lot of the tutorials I watched, people were printing out letters using a cricket. And look, because of what I do for my daily job, I'm so used to any graphic design just being solved by the click of a button, <laughs> like just aligning things perfectly with a few clicks. I don't know why I thought it would be so easy to paint onto wood. And then I caved and got stencils and I kept painting over the wood because I just kept messing up. And I was thinking, okay, if I was a hobbit, I wouldn't have a stencil. So it's okay if it doesn't look perfect. Like I just kept telling myself that it was adding to the character if it didn't look perfect and it looked just awful, horrible. So here are the three innocent pieces of wood that I got from Michael's that uh, did not know the chaos they were in for. So started out just kind of sketching things out with a pencil. Did it work? No. No, it did not. And then on the other piece of wood, I tried to do no admittance on party business, except on party business. And that was also extremely chaotic and did not work, didn't fit. So I thought I'd go onto the computer and be like, okay, I'm going to print this out and use this as a legit stencil. Um, I thought about cutting it and then I got over cutting it I think <laughs> tried to paint over it in black and do the tree of Gondor and then I printed that and cut that out and I thought okay this is a great stencil and then I don't know what it turned out looking like so then I ended up going back to the store and I caved and got some legit stencils and I realized it was looking like a kidnapper's ransom note so I decided to call it quits but here's a really nice puppy break looking at all the doggos sleeping together So both my brother and my husband were kind of laughing at me a bit saying that I needed to learn lessons in patience when it came to crafting, uh, specifically for the wood related stuff. My absolute favorite creation was doing the wreaths. With the wreaths, I went to Michael's and I got two wreaths. One of them already had a bunch of greenery already in it. I believe it was on sale. And then I got a larger wreath that was just the wreath on its own. I also picked up some fake flowers and some fake moss and some beads to work as a door handle. And I also got some of that craft paper that looked like wooden slats for the door. So the first thing I did was measure up some scrap pieces of cardboard that would be the backing and I cut it out to make sure it would measure and fit up against the wreath. I took some green, I think it was floral wiring and basically I poked holes through the cardboard, through the paper and wrapped the wire around the wreath in addition to hot gluing it to make sure that the wreath really stuck to the backing. And then with the little one, I'm just figuring out which greenery I want to remove and stick into the larger one. So basically just figuring out half was going to go on the smaller one and half was gonna go on the bigger one. And you can see here, I'm just finishing up hot gluing some fake flowers, fake moss, and the leaves to the larger wreath. I've already got the door handle on there and I'm using a blue highlighter to make the symbol on the door because I wanted it to resemble the glowing blue that was in the film. I thought I was done and then I realized that the wooden door part is actually green. So I basically took a green highlighter and went over that craft paper to make the doors look green. So here's the final pieces. I also took some string and hot glued it to the back. So the larger one, I ended up hanging as my front door wreath. And the smaller one, as you can see, is hanging up above on our bedroom. All right, guys, that's everything. Like I said, this is definitely going to be a part one because I do want to continue adding more fantasy and Hobbit inspired elements to our bedroom. I really want to make like a little reading nook in our bedroom. So that might be in part two. Let me know which one was your favorite. And if you enjoy crafting as well, I'd love to know what is your favorite medium? Do you like to do spray painting or woodworking or do you prefer more like embroidery, sewing? Thank you so much for watching and wherever you're in the world, I hope you're having a beautiful day. Bye.